The unkeg lurks beneath the surface, waiting patiently as it probes the vibrations of the earth around it. Unsuspecting prey draws near. The ankeg lunges forth from its dwelling, and using its mighty mandibles, crushes down upon its prey. Helpless, the prey is dragged deep into the ankeg's dwelling, to be consumed alive by acidic enzymes, making its flesh soft and tender for the ankeg's next meal. I wish I was a monster. That would be cool. Hold on. Did you hear that? I wish I could marry a monster. Is that legal? Oh shit. It's the monster maniac. What's up guys? It's Yogzula the monster maniac back at it again with the Ankeg. We're going to talk about what these things are, what they're capable of, how you might fight one, where you might find them, and how you can include them in your campaign and we've got one extra thing that I'm doing with this uh, this video and maybe some to come the monster maniac is making his own monsters and this time it's going to be the Ankeg Queen and I'll get to why that is and I'll talk about what she does and how she uh, interacts with the dynamic uh, so first what is an Ankeg? Ankegs are giant insectoid terrorists to infest the planet and prey on the weak and unsuspecting they have giant meaty claws and mandibles that can crush bone, smaller rocks, trees, and anyone who might encounter them. They kidnap cows, chickens, and goats, but on a good day, they might find a peasant farmer or their children frolicking near one of their burrows and kidnap them too. These things have an intelligence score of one, so they don't write ransom notes. They eat you, plain and simple. That is their primary objective, is just to stay alive and to feed. So what is an NK capable of? It's a CR2 creature, and at first glance doesn't have very impressive stats. Uh, basically, it's got two actions. When they successfully land a bite attack, they apply the grappled condition to their target, and they also have the ability to spray a line of acid that's 30 feet long and 5 feet wide on a 6 turn cooldown. That's it. Pretty simple by itself, but what makes ankegs really cool are the two other abilities that they have. They have a 10-foot burrow speed and a 60-foot tremor sense. Imagine you're strolling along, just saved the princess or some shit, and you're having a good day. Sun is shining, just made some gold, got a frosty ale with your name on it back at the tavern, when suddenly you come within 60 feet of an ankeg just hanging out in his burrow. This ankeg might be a lunatic and start barreling toward you right then and there. He'll make it an easy fight, out in the open by himself. It's a bit of a tank and spank scenario in this case. Or, alternatively, this ankeg is more patient. He's the conniving kind of ankeg. He does his research. He waits for you to come closer. He watches you. He follows you. He smells you. Then, you're within 10 feet of his burrow. He jumps out, snatches your smallest, weakest party member, and then starts dragging them down deep underground. Now, at this point, your party has probably just shit their pants. A giant, hulked-out, insectoid, predator-looking motherfucker has just jumped up out of the ground and snatched somebody up and has begun a kidnapping. So now your players are on a timer. They've got to make the decision to chase this thing down into a narrow burrow to save their party member or just go home and forget it ever happened. Chances are they're going to do the heroic thing. They're going to try to chase it down there. So that allows you to design an encounter that is underground, which is something that you don't get to do that often. So uh, make the best of it and uh, see what you can come up with. And that's why I'm going to get to something later that I call the Ankeg Queen in my imagination of what an underground Ankeg lair might look like and how it can be a really cool, interesting, and engaging encounter. So what exactly is in an Ankeg's dwelling other than the carcasses of past victims? Well, for one, maybe those victims have particularly interesting loot on them or they have a backstory. Maybe you were hired to go find a missing victim, uh, probably dead because Ankeg's, uh, they don't take hostages. Uh, maybe one of those victims was a merchant with a bunch of gear that you can take, or maybe a missing errand boy who had a very important message for a crime lord or a king that might lead to a, a different narrative path for the players to follow. Uh, maybe there are other ank eggs in the barrow, or maybe it leads to a nest where ank egg eggs are waiting to be hatched. And this, of course, is where the queen comes in. In the description below, I've included a link to the Ankeg Queen homebrew sheet for you guys to look at while I'm talking about it. And of course, feel free to use it if you want, uh, after I'm done talking about it, if you think it sounds cool. That's entirely up to you. 
Uh, so for starters, the Anke Queen is a CR8 creature with lair actions that has the capability to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, by design, she's mostly just a stronger version of an Ankeg. She can bite victims and grapple them on a successful attack. She can swing around her beefy claws. She can burrow. She can spit acid. Uh, but what's different about her is that firstly, she has higher HP, AC, and damage, obviously. Uh, but her acid is also a cone attack instead of a line, and it leaves lingering pools of acid where it lands that create difficult terrain. Most notably, however, are her lair actions. She has three possible lair actions that she's able to take on the lair actions initiative count. The first is casting the Earth Tremor spell uh, with a 50 foot radius, which will cover most of the underground lair that you're fighting her in. So it's kind of a party wide sustain that is disruptive. Uh, imagine the Anke Queen smashing her massive claws into the ground, sending shockwaves through the earth that throws the players off balance possibly knocking them prone to make them juicier targets for the other Ankeg that will very likely be involved in this encounter. Her second lair action is, because she's a queen, the ability to inspire mindless loyalty in her Ankeg drone subjects. When she takes this lair action, any Ankeg in line of sight of her gains the benefit of having the haste spell for one round and cannot benefit from the effect again for 24 hours. Uh, so if your regular Ankeg wasn't already scary enough, well now it's got two actions a turn and a bit more AC and it's just even uh, that much more terrifying to deal with. Uh, which now leaves us with my third and favorite lair action, where the Ankeg Queen can, out of desperation and for the greater good, force some of her eggs to prematurely hatch Ankeg Larva. Ankeg Larva have stat blocks of their own also included uh, below in, this, in the stat sheet, but they're very weak and easy to kill. What I love about them is their ability to burrow under a target's skin and dissolve at their flesh from the inside, with the Ankeg's inherent ability to produce powerful acid. So the way, the way I imagine these things is that they squirm between any weaknesses in your armor and they get underneath of your skin and on the first round they might affect you, you see a, a bubble. Uh, just an insectoid-sized larva, disgusting bubble under your skin that you're kind of helpless to do anything about. Uh, I'd probably allow a player to try to cut it open with it with a knife, take some damage themselves in doing so, and uh, you know, of course with their action. Uh, but after that, after more rounds pass when this thing is affecting you, it gets deeper and deeper into your flesh until finally it might be inside of your abdomen and your chest, and it's just dissolving away at your innards. Now, with three successful constitution saving throws, which the DC isn't very high for, uh, you can expel the Ankeg larva from your body. Hopefully it doesn't kill you by then. It doesn't do that much damage, but just the fact that it's inside of you and just dissolving away at your insides is just, I think that's so cool, and I would love to be able to experience that in that kind of encounter. Uh, so I'm not going to go on any longer about the Ankeg Queen, since she's not official wizard's material, but if you guys end up liking her as my first homebrew edition, let me know in the comments, and uh, maybe I'll include some more like her in later episodes. I like the idea of more powerful or boss type monsters for creatures that exist in the monster manual that have lower CRs uh, but quickly become irrelevant when players become a higher level. I think that it leads, I think that having more powerful versions of monsters, especially boss type enemies, leads to having more complete feeling adventures when certain types of monsters might be your main adversary. Uh, for instance, Ankegs. I think they're cool. But when you go up against Ankegs, you're just going up against a bunch of the same kind of creature. And if you wanted them to be part of an adventure or a plot hook, you're kind of just fighting through a bunch of them and then a bunch more of them. And then what do you, what's the end goal? What's to leave the players feeling satisfied? Like, hell yeah, we took down the, the insectoid menace. We're the big heroes. Uh, for me, and for a lot, this applies to a lot of monsters, I feel like, is they don't have that capstone uh, achievement for winning against them. And that's why I think having this, like, a, a lair boss is really neat, and probably why I'm going to make more homebrew versions of boss-type lair enemies for uh, anything that I think is appropriate. If you guys like it, let me know, because I'm really curious. Uh, anyway, moving on. So, you've busted into an Ankeg lair, and you've wiped them all out. What now? Ankegs are particularly valuable when killed, because in some settings, Ankeg chitin can be made into armor. People will pay a good price for Ankeg Chitin because the armor made from it is typically half the weight of an identical suit of armor uh, made of metal, and it's just as effective. And one cool loophole for druids who have proficiency in uh, medium armor but can't wear anything but hide is that they could wear Ankeg Chitin uh, because they, over they bypass that really dumb restriction that they can only use metal. Because uh, druids hating metal, 
I'll save this for some other time, but it's stupid. It's just stupid. Metals and a, a natural element, druids. Come on. What's the, what's the deal? Why are you so adverse to metal? Uh, anyway. You can turn it into armor, and it, it looks cool, it looks fearsome. Tribes of hunters in the world probably would have this instead of metal armor, depending on the tribe or, you know. It's, it's all about your setting, but I think it's a really cool thing to include in your setting, uh, because there's probably somewhere in the world where people would make use of this. Another use for a dead ank egg is in the consumption of their flesh. It is typically ill-advised because of the many toxic glands that ank egg produces, similar to a puffer fish that, if prepared wrong, is lethal for those who might consume it. There are, however, a number of accounts of various individuals eating ank egg. A human culinary author by the name of Frederick the Foodie once boiled a whole ank egg, convinced the boiling process would produce a clean meat to eat alongside a bucket of drawn butter and a bushel of lemons. Unfortunately, before he was able to render a verdict on the taste, Frederick's throat closed up, never to open again. Another brave consumer, Dorf Gerdson Ironbelly, slow roasted an ank egg leg over a fire and his last words were SCOOD! LIKE CRAB! BEAT NUTTY! It is theorized that ank egg tastes like a cross between shellfish, like crab or prawn, and crickets, which are known to have a nutty quality to them. Even for a master chef, it would be ill-advised to prepare ank egg as a meal. For more culinary tips and tricks, hit that sub button below and I'll teach you how to cook monsters. Thanks for watching.